The first time I kissed a girl, I nearly fell off my roller skates. <laughs> we were both teenage drama kids playing performers at the Kit Kat Club in our high school's production of Cabaret, the musical. We wore slinky black negligees, fishnet stockings, and had our hair done to the side in adorable, if slightly anachronistic, chignons. In this particular scene, to create the feeling and ambiance of a titillating Berlin nightclub, our director had the lights cut off dramatically, then light up again on all of the performers doing something provocative. My scandalous pose was a passionate kiss with my fellow Kit Kat girl. In the darkness of our opening night performance, I could feel her warm shape next to me. Her name was Gina, and she was waiting for me to reach out to her in the dark for our embrace. She was shorter than me by several inches because I was on roller skates. Yet I knew exactly where she was because we had been practicing this kiss for months in rehearsal. We had been using a classic technique many theater kids of the mid-2000s knew very, very well. The thumb in front of the lips stage kiss. In this maneuver, the actor upstage lays their open hand on the cheek of their co-kissy and places their thumb over their partner's mouth hypothetically keeping eager adolescent lips from touching and thus from turning the stage kiss into a real kiss. Gina and I were quite good at it. In those months, I had convinced myself that my enthusiasm for our stage kiss was well hidden. Tonight was opening night though, and tonight felt different. We would have a real audience. We had to stick our blocking, jump our cues, give all of our energy and emotion to the show in ways we had never before. As we applied our makeup in the dressing room before curtain, giggling and teasing and sharing thick eye pencils, Gina slowly, carefully, lined her mouth with bright red lipstick. Most of the Kit Kat Club girls were sporting some kind of lip color, but Gina's stood out. It was a singing sunrise, red, pink, orange. Her mouth shone brightly against her thick black hair and dark eyeshadow. She smacked her lips, then looked over at me in the mirror a coy smile on her face. You know, this will probably get all over your hand later, she said, waving the tube of color at me. We should just kiss for real. It'd be better, you know? More convincing, she added, turning away from me as she examined herself in the mirror. Totally, you're right, I agreed <laughs> without hesitation. Her words vibrated in my head and I started to sweat behind my knees. Just kiss for real? Make it convincing. No big deal, I added, trying to seem unaffected by the sudden change, even though to me it felt like a very big deal. <laughs> I was 17 years old and I was not sure whether my enthusiasm for this potential kiss was because of Gina, or because I had not had the opportunity to kiss many girls before, or even if it was because I was not terribly experienced in the kissing department with any gender. What I knew at 17, I thought about kissing girls a lot. Definitely more than most of my close girl friends who did not want to participate in my lighthearted yet repeated suggestions that we make out for practice. <laughs> I was genuinely confused as to why I fantasized about me and my definitely only platonic friends starring in Showtime's The L Word. I googled how to know if you are bisexual a lot. It turns out that very few straight people google such a phrase. <laughs> Cabaret is set in pre-World War II Nazi Germany. The musical tells a story of desperation, illicit love, and terrible consequences. Much of the play takes place in the sordid Kit Kat Club where we, high school students, played and portrayed the scantily clad dancers. We took ourselves very seriously. When we rehearsed the scene for the first time, our director, Mr. Moore, walked around the stage deciding what each dancer should do. A failed actor turned drama teacher. Mr. Moore was jocular and popular amongst the high schoolers, and I had been his student for almost two years. He declared that two girls would jump into the arms of a guy with their legs kicked out. He declared that one of the flexible dancers should do the splits. Then he crossed to stage left where Gina and I stood waiting. Can they kiss? He said, using his index and middle finger to point to us. These two, he clarified, still pointing at Gina and me. Gina and I were friends, and we both laughed and shrugged our shoulders, almost like saying, okay, sure, whatever. But I suddenly became very aware of too much saliva in my mouth. 
and it felt like everyone was staring at the two of us very intently. I was unaccustomed to being an object of desire or attention. I had never had a real boyfriend. I was growing up my terrible bangs with a severe middle part, and I played softball with extreme enthusiasm. <laughs> up until then, no one had really looked at me, let alone kiss me. On that fateful opening night, I can barely remember anything about the scene leading up to our big moment. My arms and hands tingled, and the lights shone so brightly that I forgot we had an audience. When Gina sauntered over to me in the scene, she was so beautiful, confident, but also transformed, dangerous. Her eyes were rimmed with smoke, and she looked up at me from under her brows in a way that felt predatory, teasing, inviting. I stared at the bright bow of her mouth. I blinked, and the lights went out. With both hands, I pulled her to me gently and moved my face to hers. My entire body surged alive. I became only my mouth, feeling her delicate, perfect lips against mine, fighting my body's desire to go on kissing her forever. My brain shrieked that we would have to stop kissing soon. I felt her hands squeeze my waist, and mine tightened their grip in her hair. Gentleness forgotten, brain on mute, I lunged into that adolescent kiss, that first taste of another girl and her breath, her flavor, her teeth. When the lights came on and we leapt away from each other as though just caught, I had to do a double take. Her face was covered from nose to chin in that shockingly bright red lipstick. It was as if I had bitten her lip and tried to mop up the blood with my face. <laughs> my upper body flashed from smoldering to icy. I grabbed her face again to turn her away from the audience as I tried unsuccessfully to wipe the makeup off with my hands. <laughs> I could tell she was confused and as I exited the stage, my pulse raced with how she might react when she eventually saw herself in any reflective surface. I was very lucky that night. Later in the show, Gina caught up to me backstage and she just laughed and said to take it a little easier next time. In the later performances, I did tone down my eagerness so that her lipstick stayed on her lips. But a new awareness had awoken in me after that first real kiss. And I felt a sense of rightness in kissing her, a sense of growing understanding, maybe even of a new identity. I was less lucky with my parents' reaction to the show. My mom was particularly upset. She thought that the musical was wholly inappropriate for my age, and she may have had a point. But she also was very unhappy that I had been made to kiss a girl, and she kept threatening to have a talk with my drama teacher about it. I begged her not to, pointing to other scandalous acts that had been parts of the show, bemoaning how embarrassing it would be for me, insisting that it was no big deal. I came out to my mom later that same school year. We were on one of our weekly mother-daughter walks with the family dogs, and although I was nervous, I wanted to be honest with her now that I was honest with myself. My family lived in Los Angeles. We knew lots of gay people. How hard could this be? After half an hour of walking, when we were almost back to our house and I was afraid to lose my nerve, I harnessed my courage and blurted out no preamble, Mom, I realize that I'm bi, bisexual. My mom burst into tears. Shaking, she told me, Melissa, society makes women out to be desirable. It makes everyone want women. It is normal to think about women, to think that they are beautiful and sexy, to want to be with them, but that does not make you a lesbian. Are you really a lesbian? She cried all the way back to our house. She cried as she begged me to be with a man if I could. She cried as she said that I would be cast out from her family if I ever came out to them. She cried because she could not bear for me to be so rejected. I could hardly look at her as the narrative that I had constructed in my head, my parents telling me that they loved me no matter what, ended painfully. I wanted to be proud of myself, and instead, I barely made it to my room until I began to sob. My mom passed away four years later. She and I loved each other deeply, but we never reconciled my queerness. It took a long time for me to understand that as much as my mom was rejecting a part of me, she was also afraid for me. 
Maybe she was afraid of her own feelings too. Because living queer can be fearful. I have been too anxious to hold my girlfriend's hand walking down the street because I cannot bear to be screamed at by bigoted strangers again. I have had men brag to my face that they were sure they could turn me straight with a good fuck from a real man, whether I wanted them to or not. I have picked up my queer friends from the gayest part of town where they have just been assaulted. My mom wanted to protect me, though she did not know how. After I came out to her, she tearfully asked me if being in cabaret had made me gay. I told her no, and I believed that. But my experience up on stage had been a catalyst. Lights out, lights up. Bewitching, terrifying clarity. So many of my questions and inklings and desires crystallized when I kissed Gina. A part of me transformed in that darkness on stage, and I threw myself into the light with new love and new understanding for myself. I did not do it perfectly, but I was ready to keep trying. I could see the way forward better than ever before. The second girl I ever kissed was also in Cabaret, a fellow Kit Kat girl whom I had a crush on. Turns out she wanted to kiss girls just as much as I did. And on our date, I wore lip gloss instead of lipstick. <laughs> Mel Viperman Cohen, ladies and gentlemen, Mel.